Hey everybody, Ty Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. It's been a long few days here on this end. I'm sorry I haven't posted a video. All I can say is life happens. Everyone goes through it. But we're here now and we're here to talk about the weather and there's a lot to talk about. So buckle your seatbelt. It's about to get interesting. In fact, it's already starting to get interesting now. We don't have any watches or warnings currently, but you saw the overview. There is a slight risk today. We've talked about this one in particular. Main threat is going to be hail, but there has been some northward extension of this slight risk, or quite a bit actually, I should say now. So we're going to get into the details of that. And then also we have two more slight risk after that in a row. So three days of slight risk to talk about there. And the thing is, each of these days have something different with them. Like for today, like I said before, Hail threat, introduction of the hatch risk as well. So we could be seeing hail greater than two inches in diameter as we progress through the afternoon and into the evening. But interestingly enough, whereas before the wind threat and the tornado threat were looking pretty marginal, we've now got a 5% tornado threat area, especially between Abilene and Waco. Could be a secondary area to keep an eye out for over here towards the Oklahoma-Kansas line here as well. And then the wind threat also picks up as we get later into the evening. With this setup, we're gonna be seeing storms forming on a dry line and we will be seeing eventually this evolving into a line of storms. Could create a secondary convective mode as we head into Friday morning. But also to make note of, just like I said, with the tornado threat being 5%, we have to be on the lookout for any sort of discrete cells as we get later into the evening, because that low level jet is gonna increase like it typically will do as we get into the evening and overnight hours, especially during this time of year. We go to day two now, and this is the day that kind of piques my interest the most. This has been constantly evolving here. We've had this as a day five threat now. So we're finally getting in range of being able to see just what our hazard types are. There's always been speculation that there's been a chance of some increased tornadic activity possible over here between Mississippi and Louisiana. But now we have the introduction of South Central Alabama as well, just south of Birmingham now. Tuscaloosa is in there as well from the looks of it. So we're going to definitely be keeping an extra close eye on these guys. Now have Little Rock in the action too here. But here's a look at that tornado threat now. Got a 5% area. Not really much of a surprise. There's even some people speculating that there could very well be a 10% area, which would make this an enhanced risk as well. So going to be keeping an extra close eye on this throughout the day, today and into tomorrow as well. Wind threat is also going to be a big deal as we head into Friday as well. We'll also have to look out for the evolution of these storms forming into a line as we go through the day Friday as well. And then earlier in the day with the increased lapse rates or steepened lapse rates as we as the proper term is, we have to be on the lookout for some larger hail over here between Shreveport, Lufkin, and just off to the east of Dallas here. So like I said, a lot going on on this day, but Friday is going to be the main setup here. As we go towards Saturday, this area has also changed drastically. We didn't really see this area pop up until actually yesterday. And then we originally were looking more so towards South Georgia and the Florida Panhandle, but now this has grown exponentially. We now have the Carolinas in play and South Georgia particularly still piques my interest, but now the uh, Carolina coast, particularly towards South Carolina, we're going to have to be on the lookout for maybe some tornadic activity, some damaging winds as well. But with the increased dew points over here and uh, instability that's anticipated to result of that, we will see this area stretch up to the north, actually now including the Atlanta metro area, which is my hometown. So if we end up streaming Saturday, you may hear a couple rumbles of thunder here and there. Looking at the wind profile here for this severe setup, main thing that's caught my eye and some things that we'll make note of here with this setup is going to be mainly with how this trough ends up evolving as time goes on. We're looking at two different levels of the atmosphere on the uh, screens here. We're looking at the low level jet to the right and we're looking at the mid levels on the left screen here. So we'll have this go to Friday here and you can see that trough evident there. 
it ends up being uh, mostly pretty weak, but there is a evidence of a shortwave that does develop. I'm going to move this forward to about, let's say, 7, 8 o'clock around the central time zone. And I kind of see the evidence of the shortwave right about here. I'm going to go ahead and circle that for you. With that in play, I do expect some storm development to occur, particularly towards the Oklahoma-Kansas line. We do also, of course, have to watch towards central Texas where that dry line is going to develop, which is going to be right here. And on that boundary, there's going to be a lot of lift in general here. The thing to make note of here is the trough itself just doesn't seem to be super amped up, so there's not going to be a lot of forcing coming from that alone. But with this dry line in play here, I do think that we can get some storms to fire as well. And we have to be on the lookout for discrete cells, as we talked about earlier, because with that increasing low level jet, like it tends to naturally do during this time frame, the threat of a tornado is there. And you'll actually see that as we go over to this screen here to the right. So we'll actually pause it and we'll go back a couple of frames. And you can see how there wasn't much in the way of low level jet but as we go later into the evening look at how that little pocket develops right there and then actually kind of roots itself in through the evening here and then look at how it continues to progress as we go into the overnight hours this is typically what the low level jet will do during this time of year as we head closer and closer into spring and then eventually even into the summer so this is what's going to help increase that tornado threat. If we go ahead and go to the following day, though, and we'll go ahead and clear this screen. So we'll pause that. We're going to get into the early afternoon here around this time frame. You can already see a little bit of uh, development here. We're looking at a little bit of diffluence going on here towards southern Alabama. And we'll end up seeing some storms firing here. And if we move this forward to that, about that same time frame, you can see that there's already low level jet in play over here. Main thing that I want you to pay extra close attention to is these wind barbs right here and the direction in which they're going. You see this wind barb is moving off to almost an east northeast direction here. And then you see these wind barbs kind of pushing off in a north, maybe north northeast direction here. So if you were to have your hands, have your hand go this direction and then this direction, and let's say you had like a pencil in your hand, that is already a signal of some rotation here, albeit horizontal. We have our directional shear already. And then of course, there's usually a difference between the speed in regards to different levels of the atmosphere as far as wind shear is concerned too so we have our speed shear we have our directional shear so tables being set pretty much with this setup here there are some questions that i do have for friday and it's mainly going to revolve around the convective mode and that's where that forcing kind of comes into play here the forcing is not incredible so it's not like we're going to get a bunch of storms to fire off from the very beginning but as time goes on we will eventually see this head into uh, a linear type event just kind of will evolve from that point as most storms typically will do especially with us being so close to the gulf of mexico and getting such strong flow from there because you can already even see it just by looking at the low level jet map with the wind barbs with that flow coming in from the gulf typically what will happen is we'll get an increased amount of convection We'll get good instability out ahead of that line too, and we'll keep those storms going. But whereas we would be looking for more discrete storms, I think that could be an earlier afternoon type event. As we continue to go forward here, we can see the potential for storms to develop even into Saturday morning. I think the threat further to the north might exist more so during the overnight and morning hours of Saturday and then further to the south I anticipate late morning early afternoon to get going probably and then shortly after that by the time we get into mid afternoon we'll probably see this be done in regards to the severe or see us being done in regards to the severe weather setup. So. 
looking at the low level jet for Saturday, and that's really a day that's kind of piqued my interest a bit more. We do get a nice little pocket that develops right here. So on the flank of that or just inside this area here is going to be what I would consider to be the point of interest. So Friday heading into Saturday could be an interesting day as well. Like I said, I really think it's going to be early to mid morning, maybe some activity left over in the afternoon. But I think the most severe weather is going to be, I would say, right around that. 7 to 11 a.m. time frame so it's going to be really interesting to see what kind of instability we'll have left over because it really wanes once we get into the overnight hours the system does have the potential to overcome that though we've seen quite a few of those as of late all right getting into the thermodynamic side of things we're looking at the heat we're looking at the moisture and beyond as well and one thing that I've made note of since I've looked at this over the last couple of days is just how strong this dry line ends up becoming or just how sharp the contrast is at the very least. If you actually look right around the evening time, you see how I'm in these 50, 60 degree dew points, right? If I just bump my cursor a little bit over to the left, oh, well, not that much. <laughs> that should be a blooper. You can see that we're at 17 degree dew points, literally right over here to the right, 60 degree dew points, go to the left a little bit, 17. I'm also concerned about that because that could increase the uh, wildfire threat over here towards Southwest Texas. We've already been dealing with some of those problems here and that may end up persisting as we continue to go on. But talking on the severe weather side of things, this dry line will definitely generate some forcing and some lift. So we will likely see a few storms develop over here, I think. Maybe enough to break through that cap, but just it's incredible to see just how strong this dry line has got or just how sharp the contrast is within this dry line here. You don't see that often. But as we continue to go forward here, you can actually see that the Gulf of Mexico moisture does not let up just seeing a really rich return over here towards Louisiana and Mississippi. And like I said, I'm concerned about this area. I'm concerned about Southern Alabama as well, but this really looks like it could be a point of interest as we head into the afternoon here and into the evening for this region. We actually go ahead and click on this sounding here. And while it's not the most impressive skew T or hodiograph I've ever seen, this does have that loaded, a little bit of that loaded gun look to it. Supercell potential might be a little bit limited based off how this setup looks. We'll actually see how it evolves through this skew T here. Like I said, I really do think that this has that has a, a lot of potential here. So I'm going to be very interested in Friday to say the least. Like I said before, this was the day that I'm kind of been uh, interested in the most. And based off what I'm seeing off these latest model runs here, definitely looks like that's holding to uh, be true here and the thing is like i said we're not done we still have saturday to look at and that moisture return exists even then mainly towards south georgia and the florida panhandle we're going to be looking for that as well and this is going to be an early afternoon type deal just as we discussed earlier we could maybe even have two rounds before that front actually ends up passing through inevitably I do think the morning, early afternoon round will probably be the strongest, but we will, of course, have to watch over towards the Carolinas, as I mentioned before. And another good reflection of that is by looking at the surface temperatures. And you can already see just from this afternoon alone, by the time we get towards, let's say, 21Z, which would be early afternoon, probably about 2 or 3 o'clock, depending on your time zone, maybe even 3 or 4 we can uh, see those 60s and 70s running rampant over here. And then as we continue to go forward, and this is really, like I said, a great reflection all three days. So we get into the afternoon for Friday. You can see that line of storms here. It's going to most likely be an MCS, maybe a QLCS here. Might serve as a confluence band over here towards Mississippi and Louisiana. We'll have... We'll have those warm temperatures kind of hanging around further to the south. So I really think it's going to be pretty unstable over here as we head into the evening and even into the overnight hours. As we go through the day tomorrow, through the uh, following day, Saturday, 
you can see those temperatures working their way back up north passing atlanta we're getting into the 70s again so i do think that there's pretty good reason why that slight risk was introduced a little further to the north here or extended north really in this case but in either sense we could be looking at uh, the front finally passing through as we get into the evening so we could have potentially a couple rounds of severe weather on saturday as well so the main thing we're going to be looking out for at that point is just really seeing how our instability is going to pan out because i think that's going to be a real question on saturday all right so now we're getting into the really juicy stuff at this point so here we are going with the cape first and then there are some other parameters we need to look at that i'm really interested in some of which i haven't even had a chance to look at so kind of excited and also a little concerned to see what some of this has to yield here we have had a look at the cape here and tonight cape is actually going to be mildly sufficient we're going to be looking at 1300 plus joules per kilogram actually seeing some areas here where we're getting up to about 15 1800 here so like i said not surprising but also and i called this earlier in the video again i keep saying it because at one point i was a little skeptical that we were going to be pushing that far to the north here but we're seeing a thousand plus joules per kilogram over here towards the uh, oklahoma kansas line so like i said some of y'all might not be expecting severe weather over here. Pay attention. And it's impressive how that cape holds up really well through the morning hours, actually. Still seeing a spot where we're at about 1,300 joules per kilogram as we continue to go forward. The cape really picks up, of course, in that little target area that I made mention of earlier over here towards the Louisiana-Mississippi line here. I really think that's going to be a hot spot tomorrow if things verify as they are currently. Right along that frontal boundary too, we're seeing almost 2,000 joules per kilogram. So like I said, damaging wind potential I do think is going to ramp up over time. And then as we go through the afternoon into Saturday, a couple of areas of Cape now. I'm actually really impressed and kind of surprised with the uh, Cape that we ended up getting over here towards my neck of the woods. About 2,000 joules per kilogram. So it could get pretty busy over towards my area. I'm surprised actually that the Cape is slightly lower in regards to far southern Georgia. There is a little pocket right here where we're getting closer to 2,000. But I thought it would be a little bit more abundant given the moisture and the temperatures that we're expected to see here forcing might be a big problem here maybe we're just not able to be quite as unstable here also i think that convective mode comes into play as well so we're going to go from that to something a little bit more juicy and that is the significant tornado parameter the thing about this is you can't read into this too much because this doesn't necessarily guarantee that you're going to see a tornado or anything of the like but it shows where those tornadic conditions can be most ideal if a thunderstorm thunderstorm geez, occurs over that area. So looking today, like I said, I'm not really expecting a whole lot except for right on that dry line like we talked about earlier. Well, we have that 2.6 right here. Even then, like I said, it's not like this is the most stout setup here. And then on top of that, right on that dry line is pretty much conditional at this point but as we go through the day tomorrow this is when i expect to see some increased numbers of anything and right now it looks like so far the nam 3 kilometers kind of favoring over towards new orleans in particular so it's going to be an area of interest right here i'm not sure if i'm going along with this ut here but We'll, we'll see how this pans out here. Like I said, there's not been a lot of model continuity to an extreme extent with this. And when I say continuity, I mean, there hasn't been a lot of consistency between the models and there's been a lack of model agreement at times. I do think that, like I said, this area is gonna be an increased point of interest. That area could be as well, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're gonna be looking a little further north personally as we go through saturday that's surprising right here because this is something i haven't really looked at too much as the significant tornado parameter i really don't read into it too often but this is over towards my area even though the storm's looking like it's going to be linear based off this photograph right here this has got a interesting look to it here 
definitely has good potential for hail here because those lap straights you don't see those around my area much sixes and some sevens here so like i said plenty to keep track of on saturday over for our area here in atlanta for any of my fellow atlanteans watching this and it's impressive that the uh significant tornado parameter actually holds up over here as we go further to the east so we may have to watch even towards inland parts of the Carolinas here. I was really thinking more so towards the Carolina coast with the increased amount of instability that we would expect there. And then seeing this here kind of changes my mind a little bit. It's a dangerous little loop right there. Something to keep an eye on, but that little loop right there might work against it. Like I said, there's going to be a lot to keep an eye on. We'll probably be streaming both Friday and and Saturday for sure. Today might not. I might. Depends on how things go throughout the day. But that being said, weather is going to be a big thing this weekend. So make sure you're staying tuned and staying on top of the weather here. So one last thing that we'll do before we go is look at how these storms could look on the radar here. We could see a couple of different rounds of storms firing over here. And as we get later into the evening, we'll watch this uh, mainly favor more north central Texas from the looks of the NAM 3 kilometer here. There's that line of storms I was discussing. And then it almost seems like it might act as a confluence band and an outflow boundary. Because then we start to see our development occur over here towards this region. And this is where southern Alabama kind of comes into play a little bit as well. Then we end up seeing that first round of storms clear out. And then that second round actually has a, the look of a few discrete storms in there as well as we head into Saturday morning. And then it kind of holds up throughout the afternoon here. So just what could we be seeing on Saturday here? That looks rather uh, intriguing to see how this unfolds here. Because the front does kind of lag a little bit of a ways back because of the fact of it being positively tilted. So Saturday could be a little bit more than what I originally expected to be. But either way, we're going to be keeping an extra close eye on it here. Make sure you stay in tune. We'll probably either have another video tonight or in the morning this time. Hopefully, if things can go right. But that being said, though, appreciate all the support, everyone that's been here supporting the channel, whether it's from day one or yesterday. But that being said, that's all I got for this video. Hopefully it isn't too long of a video for you guys. But either way, it's been Tire Metalhead Weatherman. You guys take care, stay safe, and have an awesome Friday, Thursday.